Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and today I'm going to show you five cool things you did not know existed in PMDG's Boeing 737. Let's start straight off with number one, the manual gear extension door. Did you know there is a door just down here on the floor? To be precise, exactly here. And this is what is beneath it. This is the manual landing gear extension door and you have the manual landing gear release handles just below it in red. If these handles are pulled out, they release the mechanical uplock of the landing gears so that they can extend by gravity. However, did you know that there is a micro switch built into the door itself and whenever the door is in the open position, the landing gear handle is no longer going to work. So with the door open as it is right now, we can put the landing gear handle down and we are going to get the red lights up here because the landing gear lever position disagrees with the gear. However, if we go to the outside, you will see that the landing gears are actually not moving at all. This works in either direction. With the landing gear retracted and the door open, you can no longer extend them. And the other way around, with the landing gear extended and the door open, you could no longer retract them. After you close the door, however, the landing gear will operate just fine again. Alright, let's move on to the cool thing number two. And that is the flap and speed brake lever click spots. So, I'm sure you all know that the flap lever is down here, the speed brake lever is down here, and you can move them around and so on. However, did you know that there are click spots simulated for all these detents? For example, if you want the speed brake leave in the flight detent position, you can simply click on flight detent and the speed brake is going to come out. If you want it at the 50% position, you can click the 50% position. If you want it armed, click arm, and if you want to retract it, click retract. The same thing you can do for the flap position. Now, the Boeing engineers are going to kill me for doing this in flight, but if I wanted the flaps at 5, I can simply click the number 5 down here and the flap lever is going to move to the responding position. Now let's put them back in. Maintenance is going to be happy with me doing this in truth flight anyway. Alright, let's move on to the cool thing number 3, which is the delay it takes between dialing an altitude in on the MCP and seeing the corresponding change on the primary flight display. So what do I mean by that? Let's have a look. In this position, you can see the altitude on the mode control panel up here, and you can see the corresponding indication on the primary flight display in the corner down here. But have a close look how the altitude changes on the primary flight display as I change it on the mode control panel. So I'm about to start dialing it down. Watch exactly close here on the PFD. You see how it goes in larger steps than it does on the mode control panel? This is actually not a bug like some people initially pointed out after this feature has been added, but this is indeed a feature. The real airplane takes just about the same time to adjust the MCP altitude than the PMDG 737 does. Alright, let's move on to cool feature number 4. And this is actually a copy and paste function. All of us know how easy it is for politicians to copy and paste part of their PhD, but what about copy and pasting an aircraft? Well, you can. And this is about copy and pasting from the EFIS control panel. Now, I'm sure the vast majority of you have set your PMDG options to synchronize the uh, captain and first officer electronic flight instruments, such as synchronizing the um, altimeters and the minimums. Well, yeah, that is quite easy. However, there is a little trick. You don't need to do this. And this is what we do in real life as well. Of course, in real life, we don't have that synchronization option. However, have a look at the following. Let's say we want to dial in a minimum of, for example, 800 feet. And your colleague has done it already, but you are too lazy to dial it down all the way yourself. 
So you can see on the right side there is currently no minimum shown. Now if we go to the overhead, to the displays panel and take the display control panel switch, put it to both on one, then back to normal. Now we have copy and pasted the minimums from the left side to the right side. The other thing can be done of course on the FL side, let's say we set the minimum to 989 feet as we did right now. And then we move the control panel switch to the right side both and two and then back to normal. Now we copy and pasted it back to the captain's side. And this works because the real life Boeing 737 has only a single piece of memory installed there. And if we change the source of the EFIS control panel to both on one or both on two, then it is going to erase whatever was previously in that memory of that associated site. And that way you can easily copy and paste, for example, your minimums or Q&8 pre-selection. However, be careful. If your colleague has selected certain option on his navigation display, you are going to overwrite those as well. Let's move on to the uh, spot number five. And this is going to be the fuel quantity indication gauge. Now, this gauge is only accurate to about 5% of the total fuel quantity shown. However, did you know that it is highly reliant on the pitch of the aircraft? This gauge, especially on the center tank, is only going to read correctly when the airplane is in a typical pitch attitude for level flight, so approximately 5 degrees. If you are pitching up, then the gauge is going to underread, so it is going to show you less fuel than you actually have in the airplane. And if you are pitching down, the gauge is going to read more fuel than you have in the actual airplane. And that is how it can happen that when the gauge runs dry in cruise and you shut the center pumps down, and then you start descending the plane, all of a sudden you might have some 30 or 40 kilograms of fuel back in the center tank. So, well, that's going to be it for this video. Now tell me, did you know about any of those features previously and did you use them? Which features do you find nice hidden gimmicks in the PMDG Boeing 737? I'm looking forward to read your comments. Until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this one. If you want to support the channel, you can now become a channel member. Or if you just want to do a one-time donation, you can do it through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed this one, and I'm looking forward to see you all again hopefully very soon.